All right, guys, in the last episode of uh, Dockside TV, we were using the Glow, the new Glow Matrix Shad, which will be in this month's subscription box. But the ever anticipated Matrix X Shad is what you're going to see in this episode of Dockside TV. It's going to be in this subscription's bait box also. These X Shads, like Charlie Ray's got in her hand right here. Show them, babe. Yep, that's right. And we're going to be sending out some sa a sample pack. Of, we're going to have several colors with this, but this is the four first colors that we'll be coming out with. So check out this episode of Dockside TV. Subscribe to the Matrix Bait Box. If you want some of these samples, we're going to be fishing the Great Wall of Chalmette in this one. Or you can come sign up for the Bait Box this weekend at the Lamar Dixon Sportsman Show. So, see you at the show. Hope to see you guys at the show. Links. No secret. Obviously, this is the wall in Chalmette, and obviously, this just fishing up against the wall produces some beautiful fish like this right here. Now, one of the reasons I'm up against the wall at this very second is because the wind, the northwest wind, is very strong. But we had an incredible catch starting off in the Mystico fishing in the wind going down the rocks and this estuary here in the winter time is just a fantastic place to fish when water temperatures get really low this is just a fish haven it's got a lot of deep water it's very protected the water stays clean after cold fronts it produces tons and tons of beautiful 15 16 inch trout we caught them one after another multiple double hookups big bull redfish i mean it just was as easy as it gets and fishing in a 10 to 20 25 mile an hour wind i really really like fishing this wall after cold fronts it gets a lot of boat pressure but there's just such an unlimited amounts of spots and shorelines dead ends deep cuts everything's man-made out here everything's deep it's just probably one of the better wintertime estuaries in the state of Louisiana, or maybe even on the Gulf Coast. Like right now I'm throwing off the wall in a good 15 to 18 foot of water, and there's just a good, there's, there's fish on both sides of the wall from, from here all the way down, or you can go on the other side of the wall and catch them. It's just so many places to fish gets a lot of boat pressure but since there's so many different spots it's uh it can handle a lot of boats this area starts getting really good usually sometime around october somewhere and as it gets colder and colder all the way into january it really peaks out around december and then usually starts to fade around february is about the end of the the rally over here Double up action right here. And it's just 
in every cast. We're using a tiger bait most of the time. I brought very few prototypes of the X shad with me. I wanted to slip one on a little bit more R and D on this. But I already know this is a fantastic bait and we are absolutely wearing these trout out right here. That's the tiger bait matrix. And I just caught that one on the X shed. It's every cast coming down these rocks in the midst of go. All right. Right now I'm using a 3 8 ounce jig head. You could get away with a quarter to a 5 16 but it is so windy right now. The 3 8 is contacting the bottom a little bit better for me with the wind blowing the line around. What we like to do down the midst of go in the wintertime it's throwing, we just get the wind or tied to our back, whichever's stronger that day. Today, it's definitely the wind. because We have a solid 15 to 20 out the northwest. It's blowing us right down these rocks. A little bit faster than I'd like. It'd be a good day for a drift sock right now, which I obviously don't have. And underneath the boat, feels like about 8 to 14 foot, just depending on how far off the rocks you are. And you can fish these rocks way, way off the bank. And sometimes they're real. Here it is. That one was about halfway. Look at him splashing that head. That's a good fish right there. Man, these are really nice, beautiful quality fish. Oh, look how close. That almost got me in the thumb. Anyway, that's the new one of the prototype X sheds right there. And this is about the caliber of fish. This is the average size right here, about 15, 16 inches. Just the perfect, perfect size. So let's go over that again. Throwing up towards the rocks, even though that fish hit it closer to the boat. It's eight to 12 feet. And these fish, some days we get really tight to the rocks. A lot of, a lot of anglers really like to throw jerk baits right up on the rocks and catch really big fish. Conditions today are a little turbulent. I'm not really trying to throw hard baits in this 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. We're doing really good right now. Simply just jigging these matrix sheds off the bottom. Like I said, about 10 foot of water. You can cast out towards the crab traps if you want. And I've been doing that a little bit today. The bite does seem a little bit better, a little closer to the rocks. So I am focusing on the rocks Like I said, you want to keep the wind in your back there. You never want to use the trolling motor and go into a wind if you don't have to. It's just, it makes it harder, more noise. I'm, us I'm just using a trolling motor to control me in the direction I'm going left or right, you know, too far off the rock. The wind's pushing us down the rocks. And you always want to cover water when fishing these rocks. These things go all the way from the wall in Chalmette, and they go all the way to the wall of Hopedale. Another good, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Again on that X shed, beautiful fish. Like I was saying, these rocks go all the way. Why people anchor fish these rocks is beyond me. Because it's, I don't know, 30 miles long of rocks. Any portion of these rocks can be effective. We typically are going to start closer, closer to our uh, area by the Chalmette wall. But this area gets very crowded. So pretty much what I try to do is just go past where the crowds are and then begin my drift, you know, down the rocks. You know, usually the further you get towards Hopedale, Shell Beach, the least amount of, the smaller amount of boats and traffic they have. So we'll go all the way past Violet someday. I mean, I, is this action incredible, guys? Every cast almost. We've only been here for, that X shad's doing damage. We've only been here for about 20 minutes. We're fishing horrible conditions, bluebird skies, high pressure. 
super cold. I'm in my duck camouflage hunting outfit here. Very cold, water temperatures in the mid 50s. This is a winter time haven right here. This wall area in Shalmet. It's a fantastic place to fish. You can do trout in multiple areas. You can bass fish in the marsh. I mean, it's a great, great place. I don't come down here as much as I should. I really, really enjoy it when I do. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, this is, this is, this is it. And this is, on a scale of one to 10, does it get any better than that? I'm explaining how to fish this place the best I can. Be catching these fish on this new x shad every single cast. Perfect eating size fish. The frying pan is going down these rocks. Let me try to collect myself here so it's so chaotic. We'll go over a little bit of the techniques. Again, your, your punch and train pop, 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 rail and your slack. It's pretty easy here as the tide's not real swift and it's not that deep. Typically 7 to 12 feet. Fairly simple place to fish. The thing that gives you the most problems out here is going to be boat traffic, but like I said, the whole Mystico holds fish. And it's not just the Mystico, guys. Uh, the wall itself, throwing up against the concrete, fantastic place to fish. All of the locks, the old B Avenue lock, the new guillotine lock, the main lock, the big giant lock. Great places to fish. So you got multiple lock systems now that they put this big wall in to protect flood protection. Like I was saying, you got what we call the guillotine lock. This is the one went over your head, the current blows through there, they gang up there. You got the main monster lock in the intercoastal, they gang up there. They get on the wall itself. Put this one down. They get the rocks like we're fishing now. This is a hot spot. They like all the rocks out here. This is all industrial man-made canals. So you got the rocks in the Mystico, obviously. We like the rocks by Bow Brothers, an excellent place. The rocks by the old B Avenue Lock, excellent. And then when I get bored or we catch our lemon and trout, we go run up in the marsh and chase bass. And you catch a lot of lemons and trout out here. So what I like when I am fishing this area, what I typically do, is if it's a if it's a beautiful day and warm and slick, I'll probably stay into the Lake Pontchartrain area and fish the bridges. The fish are a little bit bigger over there usually. But post front conditions, cold, windy conditions, the water's dirty, this area just stays clean. It's just so protected. And it's just a fantastic place to fish whenever water temperatures drop in the 50s. Now, if they get down in the 40s, trout, will, they stop over here, but we run into the big schools of redfish a lot during that time of year, if we have that strong of a wind. I'm really liking, really liking this X shad right now. They're just mugging this thing. And you know, another thing is when you're fishing these pound and a half, two and a half pound trout down to Mystico, you never know when you're gonna run into a big freight train redfish. They got some really big reds that cruise around here. And that makes it fun also, you know. Catching 50 trout, 10 reds, and 20 bass in this estuary is very common. And I, I wouldn't say common, but very possible. What is common is speckled trout in this size, 14 to 18 inches, till you blue in the face. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try to catch one more. And then go ahead and close this episode. The cameraman's getting a little antsy back there. He's watching me catch him every cast and he's, he's not too excited about it. But like I said, we're doing a bunch of train pop. Got crystal clear water, even though the wind's blowing west northwest at 15 to 20. Oh, there he was. Jigging that bait back to the boat. And even though the water temperature's in the mid 50s, like it's pretty cold. These fish are cold when I grab them. 
I'm really popping this bait hard, you know. A lot of people think, oh, it's cold, you just want to crawl it back like a worm. A lot of times, that's not the case. They still, these fish, mid 50s, they're, they're still very aggressive and they will attack the bluer very hard. The rod setup I like to use for this is it's a medium with a fast tip. I'm a big fan of the St. Croix Avid 6.3. Great rod for jigging trout of this size. Good backbone down in the belly of it and enough tip to really work that lure nicely. We have been on a roll. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Doc's Eye TV. I'm absolutely manhandling the trout using the Tiger Bait Matrix and the new Matrix X Shed that will be out in the spring of some time that we've put a lot of hours into this project. Y'all are going to really, really like this bait. It's got fantastic colors. It's got a, a slit in the belly if you want to rig it weedless. It's just a really, really unique. The way we hand paint these lifelike colors on there is fantastic. Got it home, of course. Oh. There we go. All right, after all that trout action, I had to come and see, check a little bass spot on the way home up in the marsh like we talked about before. There's so much to do in the Chalmette area from trout fish, bass fish, and throwing that new Matrix hog Ran into this beauty right here. But let me put him up and see if we can get on some bass. All right, so what you want to do is you're going to screw the head of the hog it can be a little hard to get it started sometimes. Yeah, get it there. We go. Get it centered. And I'm just screwing it on like a, just like a Phillips head screwdriver. Get it set right, and then I'm going to come through with that super sharp Gamagatsu hook right there. Now you can Texas, you know, skin hook it or whatever, but just depending on how much grass. I got these fish kind of dialed in, they're right in this channel, in between this little baby island and this little stretch right here. About four foot deep. Matrix hog, Cruchon Delay, purple color. What we like to do when bass fishing in the dead of the winter is you want to look for the little skinny ditches that have four to seven, eight foot of water that connect the duck ponds. That's where we are right now. fish crazy but this is one of the best table fares you know you don't want to keep the big two three four pounders but these little 10 to 12 inches and these are some of the best eating fish that we have i like to keep a few for the frying pan and they really love this little matrix hog this little four inch hog right here
little rascal. Let me show you the hook setup that we're using here with this matrix brush hog. Like I said, this is our Crucian Delay color. It's like our purple June bug style color. This little bass, let me set him down for a second. What I have here, it's a quarter ounce shaky head hook where we screw it in, you know, to the head of the hook and then I'm just gonna rig it weedless for a little bit of grass in here and that's a Gamagatsu hook with our little golden eye shaky heads that we carry. We'll try to get one more. 